Hi, my name is Amandeep Singh and I am a CPA practicing in the Metro Vancouver region of British Columbia, Canada. In this video, I will discuss important tax considerations that you should keep in your mind when starting a business as an independent contractor. You see, ever since the pandemic started, the employment of thousands of Canadians has changed. Many people are without work, others are now self-employed. Rather than lose key workers, many smart employers are now exploring alternative hiring arrangements, happy to relieve themselves from the various costs and liabilities associated with hiring and managing a workforce of employees. Employers are increasingly retaining contractors to perform much of the same work that their employees were doing before. And these employees in cover who are happy to pay far less tax by simply calling themselves a contractor are not about to complain. However, when the music stops and these arrangements are challenged, sometimes many years later, courts, government agencies and labor tribunals are usually inclined to find that these contractors were truly employees. If your employer laid you off and now you're getting the offer of getting rehired as an independent contractor, be very careful and educate yourself about your status implication from the tax angle. An independent contractor is considered to be self-employed and yet not everyone who looks like an independent contractor will be considered self-employed in the eyes of the tax man. What really matters is how the parties behaved. You might want to watch my videos on employee versus contractor. I have linked them on the top right of the screen. Let us say you satisfy the CRA's four tests and are comfortable declaring yourself as an independent contractor and are working towards building a business, you need to be aware of your new payroll and tax obligations. Let me explain with the help of a Sam Story, who was a project manager for an engineering firm. Because of restructuring in the firm, the huge organization that he worked for said, well, we still want you as a project manager, but we want you to start your own company. We want you to hire your team and then deliver the same services to us. He got pretty excited that he's starting his own business. However, Sam did not take the steps necessary to start his business right in the first place. He just went online and registered a business corporation and got very busy working for the engineering firm. He hired some engineers and some other people he needed to complete this project. Sam was a great project manager and a great leader and his employees liked him. Everything was going well, the project was going well, so he was starting to make some money and all the employees were getting paid and it was all going so well for him on the business side of the things as well. At the year end time, one of the employees goes up to Sam and says, hey Sam, I need my T4 slip. I need to file my taxes. And Sam says, oh, T4 slip? Do I need to have to do that? Okay, you know what? No problem, I'll create a T4 slip for you. You see, Sam was a pretty sharp guy. So he went on the CRA website and learned how to make a T4 slip and prepared the T4 slips and the T4 summary for all the employees. To the best of his knowledge, Someone told him that he needs to file the T4 and the T4 summaries with the CRA. So he went online and filed the T4 slips electronically. Well, not even two days later, he got a call from the Canada Revenue Agency. So the CRA agent on the line says, Sam, we have this T4 slips here. Still, we have not noticed on our file that you've ever remitted any tax for these employees. We don't have any of their CPP or EI payments. We don't have their taxes as you've never made payments. Did you withhold them from the pay of the employees? Sam said, no, well, I just paid them their hourly wage and I didn't send them any payments. By this point, he realized that he was in trouble because as an employer, there are specific steps that he needed to follow while paying the employees and making the deductions. Later, one of his employees decided to quit 
And one week later, the Service Canada called and said, hey, where's our record of employment? At this time, he was still working with the CRA on the payroll remittance. He realized that he'd never issued a record of employment for that employee. That resulted in delays for the employees to get the EI from the government. This caused a whole bunch of other headaches for him and the employees. When he opened up his corporation and got a business number, he also told the CRA that he would be filing his GST quarterly. Since he was so busy, he did not file GST for over a year. Now he was four quarters behind on his GST reporting. He got a call from a CRA agent from the GST department saying, hey, we want our GST reports and if you don't get them to us by the end of the following week, we are going to do a GST assessment on you. And Sam thought, okay, well, geez, I better start doing that. And then, you know, he realizes that his corporate tax return was also due because he incorporated the company. Hence, not only was there a GST report which was due, but he had also to do the corporate tax return and he had no idea when the report was due. He figured that he also has to file a personal tax return. I guess because it was April, well, earlier when he was an employee, he usually got a T4 slip from the engineering company and now he has to file a corporate tax return. To add insult to injury, he got a call from the bank informing him that the bank was not going to clear his checks because as it so happens, when he opened up his bank account, he just told the bank that he was going to be in business as a sole proprietor. And later on, he changed his mind and structured his business as a corporation. So the bank discovered that and did not clear his checks as the checks were written with the name of the corporation, although he never opened a corporate bank account. Long story short, it was a complete disaster for him. He started panicking and did not know what to do. He went to his CPA and it took the CPA firm a long time to basically clean all this stuff. Overall, it ended up costing him thousands of dollars in interest and penalties. So the moral of the story is folks, don't let this happen to you. You have to plan when you're going into small business ahead of time and you need to know what your obligations are. Everything that I just mentioned that happened to Sam is easily avoidable. It's straightforward to set the things up, but you got to do things right from the start. Invest in a good CPA to get ahead in your business. A CPA can be a valuable asset to your company beyond financial statements and the return on the money you spend with a CPA can be much more significant than you expect. If you want to be notified about our new tax updates, please consider subscribing to our YouTube channel. Thanks for watching and see you in my next video. Until then, bye.